following the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, the country is no better off today than when the United States first entered. After 20 years of blood and treasure, any progress made has been erased. And it didn't have to be this way. <clears throat> this administration's deadly and chaotic withdrawal was ill-conceived from the very start. There were no plans for enduring peace and the support of the Afghan people. The Taliban, who now control Afghanistan, are terrorists who impose theocratic edicts to oppress the Afghan people. They abuse women and steal humanitarian aid from starving Afghans. They partner with terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda and Tariq-e-Taliban. Ayman al-Zawahiri, Al-Qaeda's leader and bin Laden's top lieutenant, was living downtown in downtown Kabul under the protection of the Haqqani network and the Taliban, specifically the Taliban's Minister of Interior and Haqqani leader, Siraj Haqqani. Taliban holds several American hostages. In fact, the committee just heard from Anna Corbett, whose husband Ryan has been detained by the Taliban for over a year. This is unacceptable and shows the deeply flawed approach this administration has taken since the Taliban regained control. Under the Taliban rule, women and girls describe their day-to-day -day lives as living under house arrest. They are barred from public places and are not allowed to travel outside their homes without a male chaperone. Afghanistan is the only country in the world where girls are banned from receiving an education above the sixth grade. Now Afghanistan is currently facing one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. People are starving. In fact, 15.3 million Afghans are food insecure, and nearly 1 million children need life-saving treatment last year due to malnutrition. And the recent earthquakes in October 2023 have made the deteriorating situation even worse. The United States is the largest donor of humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan, spending more than $2.5 billion on assistance for Afghanistan since the withdrawal. Unfortunately, we know the Taliban are engaged in theft and diversion of these funds to serve their malign purposes. What troubles me is the Biden administration is pursuing a policy of engagement at all costs and has failed to hold the Taliban to account for their crimes. The Biden administration meet with the Taliban frequently, praise the Taliban often, and haphazardly send billions of taxpayer dollars into Afghanistan. Through these policies, the Biden administration has all but recognized the Taliban as a legitimate government of, of Afghanistan. And yet, over the past two years, on every metric, the Taliban has only become worse under this administration's policies. On women and girls, seemingly every week, the Taliban announces new edicts stripping away their rights. On diversion of humanitarian aid, Taliban interference has increased by 32 percent this year. On support for terrorism, the Tariqi Taliban, who the Taliban have equipped with weapons the U.S. left behind, is increasingly conducting terror attacks, and al-Qaeda remains safely in Afghanistan under Taliban protection. On hostages today, there are more Americans detained by Taliban than at any point since the U.S. withdrawal. Obviously, the Biden administration's policies are not working. I want to be clear that my heart is with the people of, of Afghanistan who are suffering under the Taliban. I believe it is our moral imperative to help these people who the Biden administration abandoned. However, we must be clear-eyed about our priorities and must develop policies that will ensure the U.S. is supporting innocent Afghans and not the Taliban. Anything less signals a failure of American leadership.